The newest mainline Pokemon game just came out on November 18th, 2022. Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet have officially started the ninth generation of Pokemon. And with that, there's a lot of excitement and expectations. But with the release of this game, there are also a lot of mixed reviews. So on today's video, I'm going to be giving my first thoughts on Pokemon Scarlet to give you an idea of what the game is like. Stars and Stripes! Hello and welcome to another Carrot Scraps video, and by another, I mean the 120th. So, like with most of my first thoughts and early thoughts videos, before we get into my thoughts, I wanted to give some quick disclaimers first. Most importantly being, this is not a meticulously scripted out review, this is just a stream of consciousness discussion about the game. I played a little over three hours of Pokemon Scarlet, and I wrote down my thoughts in a pros and cons list. So just keep in mind while you watch the video that if I get some details wrong, or if my opinions change in the future, that these are just my first thoughts. In addition, I wanted to make it clear that I played Pokemon Scarlet specifically, it's possible that my thoughts you know, carry over to Pokemon Violet. I imagine that it's very likely that they do, but just keep that information in mind as well. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get into my first thoughts on Pokemon Scarlet. Hi there, I am back again to give my first thoughts on Pokemon Scarlet specifically, although I'm sure my thoughts will be very similar for both games. I've put maybe like three hours into the game, maybe a little bit more, uh, and I've not earned any gym badges just yet, uh, but I've experienced quite a bit and tried out a bunch of things, and honestly, I just have a lot of stuff to say. Um, I feel very confident about the things that I have to say, although I will preface this, of course, with, you know, my opinions absolutely could and might change in the future. That could mean that they get dramatically better. That could mean that they get dramatically worse. Uh, either way, my opinions are definitely subject to change here, and I wanted to make that clear up front. These are my first thoughts for a reason. I advertise them as my first thoughts for a reason, uh, you know, for, for exactly that purpose. So I'm going to just put it out there. This game is super disappointing. Um, I'm kind of shocked and a little baffled by how um, disappointed I am by Pokemon Scarlet. Uh, but with that immediately being said, I'm still enjoying the game, and I'm having fun. I'm entertained with the game. Uh, I'm a longtime Pokemon fan. I enjoy, you know, playing new Pokemon games. I, I, you know, I always talk about, like, what is your goal with a certain piece of media? And I'd say with Pokemon, you know, what makes a good Pokemon game to me is new Pokemon. Uh, uh, the reason why I'm more excited about one of the main RPGs versus other Pokemon games is the opportunity to see new Pokemon. I love Pokemon. That's my favorite part of the series. While some people are like, there's been enough for me, I'm always excited for new Pokemon. So, uh, I, I, you know, that, that is what I'm here for. And from that respect, I think that this game so far has fulfilled itself uh, in that I've seen a lot of interesting new Pokemon. From what I understand, there's a lot in this version of the game. Um, and I like the new designs from what I've seen. And then in general, I also just like collecting Pokemon. So I'm excited to be a part of this new world and to explore this new world and to kind of have a new context to collect uh, a Pokemon and to complete a Pokedex. You know, when it comes to that stuff, I do like the game and I'm in, or, or rather I'm enjoying the game. And when it comes to exploring the world, I'm enjoying the game. Um, and so I, you know, I, I want to put that out there as well. But that being said, when it really comes to, performance this game is a huge letdown i don't know you know i want to be very clear like i don't know whose fault that is whether that's you know game freak or whether that's deadlines whether that's nintendo um i i the only thing i can say almost you know that i'm that i'm confident in is that it's probably not the nintendo switch i've seen a lot of people blame the switch for the performance issues of pokemon scarlet and violet and i i just don't feel like that is the case obviously the switch is not a super powerful console but that being said i have a lot of switch games like i have i have a pretty a pretty uh, large collection of switch games uh you know first party switch games to third party switch games and i'm kind of hard pressed to find a game that runs this poorly both in terms of just functionality with like frames per second and then also with like bugs that uh, occur pretty regularly now the thing is i'm not somebody who's a big stickler for graphics or performance i'm not somebody who you know needs something to be 60 frames per second you know when the whole gotham knights 
kind of scandal came out about, you know, 30 frames per second and, and whether people were okay with that, you know, I don't mind that the game is 30 frames per second. I really can't even see that difference. So it doesn't matter that much to me. All of that being said, I feel like it's impossible for me not to notice the performance issues in Pokemon Scarlet. I feel like it it is it is near impossible for me not to remark on these things because they're just so obvious and blatant and upfront. It's all there and it, it it's, it's not subtle. It's, it's, it's so, it's so, you know, part of the game. It's not occasional. It's regular. Uh, you know, somebody had told me, a friend of mine was like, Oh, you have to restart the game to fix like the f- uh, frame rate issues. If you've been playing for too long, I'm like, these issues have been present in the first hour of gameplay. You know what I mean? So again, when it comes to performance, I like to think I'm pretty forgiving. I'm more so about gameplay um, and even design rather than, you know, performance and graphics. But in this case, performance is, it is unavoidable in terms of noticing it. Um, And then when it comes to design, I do have a lot of problems with the design of this game as well. Uh, You know, battling seems fine so far. Um... But the design of the world, this open world, is probably one of my biggest criticisms. And I I did want to talk about the stuff that I liked more first. But since we're here, we're going to just jump right into it. Um, So we talked about performance. That's that's a huge criticism I have of the game. Again, not because it's, you know, I'm, I'm splitting hairs here, but because I think it's very, very present when playing the game. But then the other thing is that the design of the world and the design of how you explore the world isn't really well done either it's a an open world rpg it's huge it's large and yet i feel like the game is very empty Uh, you know when i was first playing i was wondering why i was running into so many items at first i was like oh i gotta get all these items and i was like hold on why why are there so many items you know the little pokeballs around the world and i realized quickly that these were to fill the open world they were meant to be little rewards for exploring um, you know, in open world games and map games, it's a whole genre of video games now, right? Uh, Far Cry style games that, you know, people just like to wander around an open world. And as long as it's pretty and as long as you have things to do, people are having fun. Some people don't like those kinds of games. Other people do. Um, and I I felt like those Pokeballs, those rewards around the world were meant to be these little treats to make it feel like you were, you know, rewarded for exploring, you know? Um, and after... A very short amount of time, I realized that and they didn't feel as special. It didn't feel like I had to, you know, I looked into the world. I'm like, there's tons of these. Why do why do I even care about finding them? And it's just like, you know, a potion. It's just an, uh, you know, uh, ether. Like it's it's not a lot of very interesting things when I feel like, you know, that stuff can be rewarding. But the the real exploration is for Pokemon. Um, one of so so I get to kind of the main city where uh my school is right and i just i don't know i walk around for a while and i explore and i realize very quickly again how empty the world is again the stuff that does exist is moving at like six frames per second and disappearing and reappearing but then when i actually am close to them like it's like a sentence explanation that's fine but they're so spread out that it makes it not rewarding you know like you know, the older Pokemon games, you'd walk into a house and talk to people. They didn't necessarily have the, the greatest things to say, but it was such a small environment that those kind of interactions did make the world feel a little bit larger. Whereas here, the world is so large and there's so much space between those interactions that they almost feel like superfluous. You know, I don't like talking to those people. And in, in addition to that, you know, there are all these locations where I would get stuck in alleyways or I would, you know find myself like falling into an area that I wasn't supposed to and I'd start floating I I, I, you know I climbed the roofs and I was like oh this is cool I get to explore the roofs and there really wasn't anything on top of the rooftops except for these really bad you know traversal accidental traversal puzzles where I fell off the roof and then got stuck Uh, and then again like you know getting lost down these uh, you know alleyways that don't seem intentional. It seems more so like they didn't know that I could get back here. Um, when I was exploring, you know, some of the more nature areas, uh, I found this cave and I felt like this cave perfectly represents my disappointment with the game and its design. It's just a cave with nothing in it. It's a cave with nothing in it. And 
I, I, th- again, I feel like this and, and another story is like the perfect example of why I'm disappointed is that like, what, what is the purpose of this now in a far cry game? For example, I love far cry games. If I find a cave with nothing in it, no items, no story, no mission, you know, I'm sure some people don't like that and that's fine. But a lot of the times when it comes to a game, like, um, let's talk about, um, Ghostwire Tokyo is another example. I feel like a lot of people were critical of that. The thing is, the world is part of that exploration. You know, I was kind of playing with this idea of like virtual tourism, where part of the fulfillment is seeing the world and you don't really need to collect something. It's just an artist created this environment to be moody or beautiful or strange and isn't that nice. And while it would be nice to have an interaction in that corner, you know, that could improve it, or while there, it would be nice if there was an item or, or whatever world building, it could also just be empty, and as long as the environment is made well and has care put into it, I can appreciate that. The problem here with Pokemon is that that cave is like copy and pasted assets. You know, the assets in this game are not you know, groundbreaking. And I have nothing, I have no problem with them not being realistic. I'm fine with, you know, stylized uh, uh, graphics. That's totally fine. But this cave was just rock, you know, textures that I'd seen anywhere else. And I really was taken back by like, wow, I'm really just in this cave and there's nothing. Like there's nothing here. And again, I feel like that is a more exaggerated version of the rest of the world. The rest of the world might have a little bit more to it, but it's varying degrees of that empty cave. And then I was talking to another friend of mine about Pokemon, and we talked about the class system. So, so you, um, you know, you go to school, you have a, a classes that you can go to, and classes that you can take, um, where basically you get these tutorials or these world building from these classes, but they're very basic. Like the the class that I took told me that I can have my Pokemon follow me if I press ZR, and it took like what like three minutes to explain that. But I feel like it's a perfect metaphor for the game uh, where it's like, here's something that you can do. Take classes. What is the substance of that class you took? Something you already knew and something that was already explained. It's essentially useless. It's here in name only, but when you actually do it, it's not really anything. So I feel like, again, not to not to belabor this point, but like I feel like that's the main disappointment here is performance, which is very rare for me to, 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 you know, focus on and then design. Um, and when it comes design, while, when, when it comes to design, while there are a number of other things I might criticize, the main thing is this emptiness that it, it doesn't feel like it needs to be an open world game. It feels like if they made this game slightly smaller, maybe I would enjoy the design of the world a little bit more, or maybe they would have a better open world for me to explore. But big doesn't mean better. And it, it feels that way. It feels really empty between places. And I, and I just can't help but feel that if it was a little bit smaller, I would enjoy it just a little bit more. So that was pretty harsh. I feel like, right. That was, that was some very raw, uh, negative thoughts, negative feedback on the game. And that's because, you know, I'm being honest. And again, these are my first thoughts. They could change, but I have a feeling that these thoughts are going to be pretty consistent. Um, but you know, again, I want to be honest with you. I want to, I want to put it out there and it helps me think more about the game. Um, and I hope that you gain something from listening to me talk about this. But let's shift with that in mind and all of that still being true into some more positives about the game. And keep in mind, like, I am very critical of this game, but I am still enjoying it. Does that mean it's a great game? It, potentially not, right? But I am still enjoying the experience. And why am I enjoying the experience? Mostly because it's a new Pokemon adventure. Like I mentioned earlier, my criteria is pretty low for a new Pokemon game, and that's to have new Pokemon and to be able to complete this Pokedex. And I can't deny the fun of exploring the world and being excited to see new Pokemon and wondering what they are and reading their Pokedex entries and you know, and then trying to catch as many Pokemon as I can and trying to build a team around it. Um, when it comes to exploring in that way, I do really like the game and, and I, or, or at least I'm having a lot of fun, right? Exploration in terms of what Pokemon I will find past and present, new and old, that is really exciting. Um, but I have a feeling that that would be exciting regardless of the game. You know what I mean? Um, so I don't want to give this game too much credit, but I will say that, you know, I'm having a good time. Um, You know, a friend of mine told me that they weren't super into the new Pokemon designs, and I literally told them, you know, I hadn't even really thought about that. I was just excited to see new Pokemon, and it's true. I am just excited to see new Pokemon. Um, I typically haven't been as critical of Pokemon designs over my lifetime. It's mostly just that I like to see new Pokemon, um, 
But from what I've seen, I mean, I can kind of understand. Like, there was a, a new rock Pokemon that kind of just seemed like a crab with a rock on its back. And I'm like, I feel like we've seen something like this before. And I really like Quaxley, right? I really like my little duck Pokemon. But I, I've joked about this since the release. It really does remind me of uh, Ducklet, um, a Pokemon that we've seen before, uh, both in design, inspiration, and even color scheme. So... You know, the, I guess I do see that for sure, and, and I feel like it's a possible I could be more critical on that in the future. But I'm also excited to see other Pokemon. Um, I, you know, I I, I'm, I I can't deny my excitement when I see something new uh, and, and how interesting I, I think they are. In fact, I think one of the most interesting parts um, of this journey so far has been Titan Pokemon. Uh, I'm really curious about them. Again, I like the mystery around them. I didn't know that that's... I, I, I didn't have a lot of information in, uh, going into this game, or at least not as much information as I had previously. So learning more about Titan Pokemon and seeing their designs and reading the lore, that was really cool to me, and that felt really rewarding. I feel like that's Pokemon on its best. You know, new Pokemon, new design, history, lore, discovery. That That's the best part of Pokemon. So um, learning that was really cool. And branching off from that, you know... I think they give you these kind of three goals or these three missions, the, these three journeys where it's like, you know, you can take on Team Star, you can take on the gym leaders, or you can take on the Titan Pokemon. It's fairly simple and not drastically different than previous Pokemon games, but there is something about it that like when they presented these three options to me, it felt like there were two other Pokemon leagues that I could fight almost. You know what I mean? It really did feel like there was more, I was like, oh, that's awesome. I can run into essentially, you know, with team star, more gym leaders and with a Titan Pokemon, you know, uh, like more, more challenges that are similar to gym leaders. And I was really excited about that. So I do like that design choice. Um, and I'm excited to interact with them more. And again, I'm excited to interact with more Titan Pokemon. Um, more, th oh, uh, something else I wanted to mention is that I really do like that the, Pokemon artwork uh, is, you know, the non-3D artwork is used in the Pokedex. Uh, I, I thought that, or, or rather in your team decks, whatever. I thought that was really cool. I always love seeing Pokemon art uh, that's not 3D factored in. Um, because while it's cool to see these Pokemon in the environments, I'm not always the biggest fan of the 3D models. Um, speaking of new things for this game, uh, Terra typings are a big part of this game. It is the new gimmick evolution. Um, and I say that lovingly, not as an insult. Uh, I'm also going to say the name wrong, but the full name is Terrastalizing, I believe. And essentially, uh, it's very similar to, you know, again, when I say uh, gimmick evolutions, it's very similar to Mega Evolutions. Uh, you know, it's very similar to Gigantamaxing or Gigamaxing. It's very similar to Z-Moves, where it, it's this new power in this new world. I feel like modern Pokemon games really do um, feature these kind of, you know, new evolutions or new powers. And... Um, I like I like Terra typings and I also don't at the same time. Um, and I'll I'll explain why I dislike it first, I'll say. Is uh well first of all, let me explain what it is. It's like, you know, you have this kind of tint that covers the Pokemon that makes it look like it's this crystallized, you know, animal. Um, and then it has a tiara with a giant symbol or a giant giant uh statue on top of its head. And the statue like corresponds to their typing. Um or the, the new Terra typing. And I just, uh, uh, to continue with that, you know, Pokemon can have one or two typings, but when they have a Terra typing, it's a third typing that could either match the typings they already have or be a completely new typing. So, uh, you know, for example, a Pikachu is an electric Pokemon, but could have a Terra type that is flying. You know what I mean? So that's, that's, that's one example. What I dislike about it so far, um, I just... You know, again, I like new designs. I don't like that the design is so simple. I don't like that it's just this kind of, you know, this filter that you put over the Pokemon. But I could almost live with that. What I really dislike is the big statue on their head. I feel like it's very obvious. I feel like it's made for younger players, so I don't want to harp on it too much. But it just feels like it's trying very hard to illustrate the point. Like, this is a different typing for this Pokemon. Look, here's this big symbol on their head. I hope this makes sense. Um, I just feel like they could have done it better and, and made a... a a more interesting design, a more flashy design, or a more timeless design. I feel like these designs are super generic and will be potentially forgotten. Um, you know, Pokemon badges are a great example. People love Pokemon badges. You know, Pokemon badges could just be 
the most basic thing in the world. They could just be orange triangles, right, with a number on them. Uh, but the thing is, they designed these badges so well that people resonate with these designs decades later, and people still love even modern, uh, you know, badge designs. It's such a big part of Pokemon, and I feel like that should have been used with these terraforms, where it's like, if you design a really cool tiara for these Pokemon instead of kind of a more generic one that is trying to send the message as quickly as possible, I feel like you would have had something that, that would have been treasured a little bit more. But that's just me. Um, what I like about terraforms is, I mean, it's just cool to have something new and interesting, but I also have this understanding of it. I don't know if this is true. I want to put this out there. I don't know if my understanding of terraforms is perfect, uh, but if my understanding is correct, I think they're really interesting. So, Again, correct me if I'm wrong. Understand if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm trying to put it out there as best as I can. Terra terraforms are one of two things, and I'm not sure which one it is. It's either one, that every Pokemon has its own terraform, and either that reflects their previous typing, or it's a completely new typing. But either way, if you catch two Pikachu, they will have the same terraform of flying, you know, in that example, right? Um hypothetically but so it's either that that every pikachu you catch will have the same terraform or you know if, if quaxley's terraform is a, a rock like every quaxley will have that as their terraform or the second option which is that pokemon each have their own terraform and if you catch two pikachu one could be a poison you know have poison as their terra typing or they could have flying as their terra typing and it just depends on your luck and uh, your, you know, uh, RNG and your commitment to searching for these Pokemon on what types of terraforms you can get. And so you could get a Pokemon that has a very rare terraform if you just spend enough time, spend enough time searching for these types of Pokemon. I don't know which of those two it is. I think it's the second one. And if it is the second one that each Pokemon, regardless of typing, has their own terraform... I think that's really interesting. It actually reminds me a lot of looters where it's like, you know, you can become all powerful. You just need to put an obscene amount of work into to locating this. And I think, you know, if, if that's what terraforms are, that it's different for each Pokemon, it could have, you know, bad results on the meta uh, competitive scene. But I just think it's such an interesting concept that really could bring a lot of replay value to the game. If you're not just looking for new Pokemon, but you add this new layer of, you know, searching, which is terraforms, where, you know, if you really want to, you could find a, you know, uh, Charmander with a, a, a water terraform. You just have to be really committed and it could take forever, you know, or you might never find it, but it is possible. You know, I think that's really interesting. But again, I want to reiterate, I don't know if that's how it works. Um, I hope that's how it works. I think it would be interesting. Um, and so terraforms are very interesting to me. Again, I'm disappointed by some things about it, but I'm also uh, really intrigued by other things about it. At the end of the day, I'm just excited to have a new, you know, uh, gimmick thing to work with so i i do think that 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 is cool um something else i wanted to mention is the music i think the music is fantastic in this game i tend to prefer uh the chiptune you know tracks from earlier pokemon games i'm a big fan of the soundtrack from pokemon uh silver and gold um and and i really love the you know ds games uh soundtracks i really love the Sinnoh regions uh, uh you know music um and while i don't dislike the more modern music i do definitely have a, more of a distance to them. Um, sometimes they feel a little bit more generic. And the music in this game so far has been fantastic. There have been a number of tracks that, like, their melodies have immediately hooked me. And I've thought, like, oh, I got to listen to that while I edit. Or I got to listen to that while I work. So uh, I definitely like a lot of the music uh, that I'm hearing in the game so far. And I think it's really good. And I think it's, you know, I, I would go as far from what I've heard so far to say that it's better than a lot of other tracks that I've heard from Pokemon games recently. So I, I, I quite like the music. Um, speaking of designs, like we had mentioned earlier, uh, I do really like the character designs in this game. Um, you know, maybe the characters aren't always saying the most interesting things, but at least they look really interesting. And I think there's an army of really cool looking people in this game, whether they be, you know, gym leaders, whether they be professors, whether they be teachers, there's a lot of cool designs. And I don't think it's, a uh, you know, the people in this, in this game, I don't think, you know, I think it's one of the strongest uh, parts of the game in terms of like the design. I think they really brought out their A game. Uh, there are very few characters where I'm like, I think they look boring. I think the Team Star Grunt uniform is one of those places. I don't really like the way the Star Grunts look, but the Star, the Team Star like kind of, you know, 
leaders look incredible. Um, so, you know, my criticisms of, of character design are very few and far between because they really, really look cool. And it's, uh, again, one of the strongest parts of the game. Uh, speaking of character and design, you get to customize your character very quickly in this game. And I think that's really cool. Um, I really love that. I like how early on you get to design your character. And I think as a result, it it makes you more... It makes you like your player character more. It makes you identify with them more. You don't have to wait to get to a certain city to cut your hair a certain way or to, you know, you know, uh, make your face look a certain way. You right out the gate can make your character look however you want and I think it really helps the role playing of a Pokemon game to have that. Obviously, we always like the look of of of, of the new game character, right? But I like that I you know, feel such a connection to my player character from the immediate start. Um, going back to Pokemon really quickly, again, while we're still talking about uh, designs, um, I do really like the design of the uh, new Pokemon that I have seen. I like, you know, the new legendary Pokemon I think is really cool. And speaking of the new legendary Pokemon, I like something that I really like is how you are introduced to that Pokemon. I love that we get it so early. Um, I think, you know, again, with a Pokemon game, there's a lot of template and I think that can be fine and fun. I know some people won't like template, you know, uh, design, but the fact that each game is very similar to each other is also part of what people like, but making those design choices that are slightly different really do make these games stand out. And one of those things is changing, like, you know, just having you get this, uh, you know, legendary at the start is a huge change, even though it's small. And I think it, it it was one of those details where when I was starting the game, it really hooked me. And I was like, oh, this is cool. This is a really cool new thing that they're doing. And I appreciated that a lot. Um, I think, you know, again, that little change endears you to the game. Um, and so I wish there was more of that sometimes. And uh, uh, so I like that. I like that we get that that Pokemon so early. And in addition to that, and very similarly to that, this game also takes place at a school. And I feel like it has the same effect as getting the, uh, poke, the, the legendary Pokemon so early, is that it's such a different location. It's such a different setting. It's such a different story than previous Pokemon games, which typically have been like, you know, you move into a new town. They've typically been the same just in new places. So changing the setting and the context really does have a huge impact on the player. And even though I wish the school was a little bit bigger, um, I wish it was a little bit, you know, more interesting. I still do think that I appreciate how different it is. Like on paper, just the idea of it takes place at a school. You know, it feels like I'm in uh, Soul Eater, you know, at the Meister Academy. It looks beautiful. And the idea of it is really cool. Even if I wish, you know, we had a little bit more going on in terms of it being an actual school. So to wrap all of this up, I think the last things that I want to leave you is, you know, my thoughts on Pokemon Scarlet and I assume Violet because they are very similar games is that I I have th I have three main thoughts and two of them are negative and, and there's one positive. The two negatives are one, the performance is really poor. And as somebody who does not really linger on performance, the fact that I'm talking about frame rates and talking about bugs so much it it is it it speaks for itself from that point of view that like i can't play this game without mentioning it because it's so uh, uh obtrusive it's it's so present in my gameplay so that's the first thing and that is a huge con for me um and then the second thing is design that you know just because we have an open world rpg doesn't mean that it's been designed well uh, i don't think that it is a fulfilling open world from what i've seen so far but again you know that could change over time um but from what i've seen in just exploring the first couple of areas in my gameplay it doesn't feel like there's a lot of care put into these places i will consistently find a cave with literally nothing in it no reward whether it's an actual item reward a pokemon or even just something interesting to look at there's no reward it's just the same copy and pasted textures only it's in a cave someplace and that'll happen you know in these caves or in these uh you know alleyways there are a lot of areas in this game that just feel forgotten like like they just put it there to make it feel larger and I feel like this game could have been better if they still called it open world, but made it a much smaller open world and actually filled it with stuff that they thought was interesting instead of just creating tons of empty spaces. Um, so that's my other big criticism is from a design level, uh, I think this game has a lot of problems specifically in the realm of open world design. 
um, and the way that you approach exploration. Um, and then the last thing I will say that is a positive is that I am still enjoying the game. I'm still having a good time playing. I'm having fun exploring. I'm having fun catching Pokemon. But that being said, there's a big asterisk next to that. Even though I am enjoying the game, I don't know if I could say that it's the game itself or just Pokemon in general that is creating that enjoyment. Um, the, the fact of the matter is... You know, there are plenty of games that I can't even stomach. You know, I can't play because they're just so boring. Um, and so those games aren't even getting me to play through it, regardless of if they look beautiful or play well or are designed perfectly. That That's not the problem here. Here, I do want to play this game. I want to keep playing. I, I'm not bored. The, the, the question is, is that because of my fandom of this as a, you know, as a property, as a franchise? Um, or is it the game itself? Is there something about the game itself that's keeping me hooked? I, I'm not sure which of those two it is. It could be a mix of both. It could be one or the other. But either way, it is true that I am enjoying the game. So I hope that that helps illustrate my feelings on the game, and I hope that that is helpful to you, uh, you know, whether you're still developing your thoughts on the game or whether you're deciding to pick it up. You know, I hope that was helpful to you. And again, as a reminder, my opinions could change in the future, positive or negative. But uh, I'm, I'm happy that I got to talk about the game today, and I'm excited to keep playing Pokemon Scarlet and to see where my adventure takes me. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. I want to thank you so much for watching. If for some reason you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and to subscribe to my channel for more. As regular viewers know, I make a variety of content on my channel, and I'm always going to make the videos that I want to make. But if you see something you enjoy, make sure to let me know, and I'll try to prioritize that kind of content in the future. If you want to watch me play video games live, you can check me out on Twitch, where I typically play superhero games and occasionally horror games. But this month, we've also been celebrating Nintendo November, which means that we've been playing Nintendo games occasionally. So if that sounds interesting to you at all, make sure to check out my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash carrot scraps. And all my other social media, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram are at carrot scraps as well. So I want to thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Oh, 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 oh man. Let me tell you when I record a video, and, and the microphone isn't on. It just takes a little shred of my soul, you know? My, my soul is like a uh, mirror that is shattered. Uh, and that's my... <laughs> that's the heat in my house turning on, which, which needs to be turned on off. Anyway, I, yeah, the mirror thing. I'm, my soul is a mirror uh, that has been shattered. And every time I record something with the mic off, uh, a little sliver of that mirror is taken. So... Do with that information what you will. It is accurate, though.